Today I want to talk about chapter seven, bankruptcy, and is there a minimum amount of debt that you have to have in order to qualify? Hi, I'm Scott Allen from a bankruptcy attorney in Alabama. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Thanks for checking it out. If you haven't already, subscribe and hit that notifications button so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. A common question that I get from people is, is there a minimum amount of debt that they have to have in order to qualify to file chapter seven bankruptcy? Well, the answer to that question is no. The amount of debt you have and relative to what's going on in your life is usually a factor that we look at in determining or trying to make a determination or a recommendation if chapter seven bankruptcy is right for the person who's asking the question. When we're looking at chapter seven bankruptcy, there is no minimum debt requirement, but there are some maximum amount of debt that you can have in other types of bankruptcy cases. There are certain chapters that set debt limits for the amount of debt that you have to have. But for chapter seven bankruptcy, the things we look at is number one, have you filed a prior chapter seven bankruptcy case in the last eight years? Because if you have, you don't qualify for a chapter seven bankruptcy. Another factor we look at is the amount of equity that you have in your assets or your stuff or such as real estate or cash laying around or paid for assets. That's one thing that we look at to try to help you determine if you would qualify for a chapter seven bankruptcy. Another factor to consider is your income. You have to pass what's called a means test. And in 2005, under the Bankruptcy Reform Act, Congress wrote legislation which requires people to pass a means test. And a means test in a simplified version is a six month look back at your income where we compare your income with other people's income in the community. And if you make above a certain amount of money, you have to go to step two in the process for a further analysis to determine if you qualify. And then in the second part of the means test analysis, we dive into and look at your expenses that you pay. We look at the secured debt you pay. There's multiple things. It's, it's sort of a mathematical formula set out to take a look at all these things. And so if you don't pass the means test and you filed a bankruptcy case, there would be a presumption of abuse that would arise and you would have an obligation or you would have to rebut that for some reason to show that it wasn't abuse. Another factor would be is, do you even need to file, right? Because some people are what's called judgment proof where they only receive social security benefits, they have no assets. There are situations where if a creditor sues you and a creditor gets a judgment against certain people, there's really not much they can do about it. So there are situations where it just doesn't make sense to file chapter seven bankruptcy. Another thing that we look at is timing. And I've talked about this in other videos is health insurance. Do you have health insurance? Do you have some major medical procedure that's upcoming and you'd anticipate maybe some medical bills that are there? Because this chapter seven bankruptcy is kind of like you're acing the hole. It's your way to get a fresh start. You want to make sure that you're using this wisely to maximize your benefit to help you get a fresh start. Another factor to consider is the type of debts that you have, because there are some situations where chapter seven bankruptcy just may not make sense because if your certain tax debts are considered maybe priority debts, depending on when the tax was incurred, the type of tax it was, and that tax debt may not be dischargeable in a chapter seven bankruptcy. There may be some child support, some alimony, or some type of domestic support obligation that's non-dischargeable or you can't wipe it away in a chapter seven bankruptcy. And if that's all the debt you have, sometimes it just don't make sense to file a chapter seven bankruptcy. So there are not just one factor to consider when you're looking at filing chapter seven bankruptcy. There's multiple factors that need to be looked at. And also cost. Cost is a factor to look at because depending on how much your debt is, it may not make sense to file bankruptcy or just a small portion of debt when you're looking at the potential impact of filing. 
it's really a holistic approach that we take a look at in determining is chapter seven best for you. In essence, there may be other means or other ways or other reasons why you don't file chapter seven bankruptcy. There may be ways to defend your actions in state court. There may be other factors that to consider. So I hope this information was helpful. If you need some assistance or if you've got some additional questions, feel free to shoot me an email, give me a call. Be glad to help you if I can. I hope you have a great day.